Hello Internet, Brian here for work to game videos and I wanted to talk to you about a recent interview Yoshi P did with the Korean website Game Focus regarding MMOs and Final Fantasy XIV in general. This interview was provided by the website Solorocondo.com. I'll be sure to include the link to the article in the comments below because Lord knows I can't pronounce how that website's <laughs> name is. Anyhow, there are three themes for this interview. Are MMORPGs dead? Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO for beginners and female gamers, and are there other games that Yoshi P would like to make? So on the topic of are MMOs dying, Yoshi P said this, MMORPG genre being a dead topic or a common topic is actually more prevalent in the West. The reason why that there aren't many companies around the world willing to actually make uh, new ones is actually dealing with game investments. So they determine that MMOs are higher risk, so investors are more likely to take their money elsewhere. And so games usually start after actually receiving that type of investment. MMOs uh, nowadays have to, uh, to be successful, uh, they have to be very large scale games, so they require a, a large amount of upfront cost. Some companies really want to make them, but they can't afford to do it. Uh, and then there are those who will try, but then they're also then told by investors to actually work on other genres and games instead. He believes that they aren't dead, but they're just taking a break. 10 to 15 years, uh, he feels that they will be back and big again, but that at the same time, if they don't get new generations of MMOs, he could see the genre easily start to fade uh, out of existence. He says, specifically in South Korea, there are plenty of games out there that you allow you to create a character and begin with using flashy skills right off the bat. However, such games do have a bit of a hurdle for casual gamers uh, and that come, you know, really from that social media, that social games type of background. So there are definitely some challenges ahead. So I find this topic interesting, namely because it feels like there were years where we saw MMO after MMO being released. And either that's changed or I've been too busy or engrossed with Final Fantasy XIV to care. On the investment side of things, it is very real. And that brings Final Fantasy, you know, XIV's success to all that more greater heights that Square Enix put that type of investment back in the game. I could easily actually see Square Enix doing another MMO at some point in the future, but seeing that they have plans all the way for Final Fantasy XIV to go to 6.0 at this point, uh, I probably don't <laughs> uh, see that actually coming uh, anytime soon, especially because the game is built off of a, a PC specification, so we could easily see that game continue to graphically improve as technology improves. So I think that's kind of a positive thing. I'm interested to know what you guys think about that as well. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, so for the second kind of theme, Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO RPGs for gamers and uh, female gamers alike. So first, UCP feels that the first part of Final Fantasy XIV isn't that fun, and it's something that they've been wondering about whether they need to introduce more complicated skills and different systems for players from the get-go. So I know personally we've seen lots of gamers, and they kind of burn out around the 30s because there really isn't a lot of action and things going on that part of the game. For Korean gamers, they have uh, to keep players of a new generation in mind, and not doing so is going to make, obviously, a... Uh, having them come to Final Fantasy XIV much harder. Final Fantasy XIV actually does have a lot of female players, but it wasn't the intention or focus that anything they did to gather those female players. In fact, they think it has a lot to do with that Final Fantasy XIV doesn't introduce a lot of things that would sour the taste to female players. Yoshi P was once a core gamer, and he doesn't really care for equipment that shows too much skin. I mean, from a role-playing side, it's not all that practical, but this is a land of magic and, <laughs> and mystery. But um, he also feels that a lot of people have this image that online games are dominated by male players, and so they feel like that adding in sexy female characters is, uh, is with a bunch of risky equipment would actually make it popular, and he feels that he, he disagrees with that, that sentence. He feels that there is something that makes that you know makers just assume on their own and believes that the female gamers see this type of equipment and they don't really care for it. They're like, what the heck is this? Since 14 actually requires a monthly fee to play, they can actually go on without having to have those gotcha systems uh, to get the super sexy outfits he feels. Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have anything like that, so he believes that the game can really be played with no worries. 
And still, this is interesting. You can still see that, uh, you, you know, characters have underwear in the system and they've actually done some analysis to find out um, if this is a big thing. And find, they found that not a lot of the female players actually just, you know, take off uh, their clothes on purpose. MMOs are obviously enjoyed by a variety of people of age and genders, and he feels that they, uh, he always needs to do ca- to cater to not one specific category, but to everybody. You get, offer something that you know a, veras- a, uh, a large amount of people might enjoy. So I'm thankful that I get to play this game actually with my wife, and she's commented a few times that she really does enjoy this game, and it's fun picking out the cool looking gear, and that it doesn't, it's not over uh, overtly sexualized. I liked that Yoshi P's team has actually looked into the female population taking off their clothes. I like that, you know, maybe there was this team. <laughs> we got to get to the bottom of this, see what's happening. Um, I always feel like uh, <laughs> uh, 14 is, is very inviting in, in that, in that sense. And, uh, and obviously as new content comes out, it, it really makes that first, you know, that first part of the game a challenge. And what I mean by that is that, so as we get new expansions, that, that zero to 30, you know, is a, a, a bigger, uh, it's further away and it, people do tend to burn out and that's right when the game starts to pick up and really start introducing some new concepts. So that's unfortunate. I'm happy to see and hear that they're, you know, looking that they're aware of that and they're always looking to see how they can improve that, uh, going forward. So on the last theme, last topic, are there any new games that Yoshi P would like to make? So Yoshi P works as both, both the producer and director of Final Fantasy 14, but he would actually like to quit being the producer as soon as possible. It's a lot of work. Uh, in fact, that just because he has two jobs, it doesn't mean that he gets two paychecks. <laughs> um, if he could find anyone who could take his position as producer, that he would he would resign that position immediately. However, uh, he does feel that he is the most passionate about the game, and he's more motivated for Final Fantasy XIV than anyone else. Forcing him uh, self to really work, you know, he wants uh, to be courteous to the players. He believes that since he's the most motivated overall, that he's going to have to work as the producer for now. There are many games that uh, switch out producers and directors with each new expansion pack, but Yoshi P says that there's still much, still much more that he would like to do with Final Fantasy XIV. And until he does that, he wants to, you know, do everything uh, for Final Fantasy XIV, and so his motivation isn't going anywhere. Of course, there are players that say that Yoshi P should quit already, and he laughs about that. Personally speaking, Yoshi. P does have plans uh, for four other games that he would like to make, but he says that he's going to work on those games when he's a little older. He says that his thoughts of raising a successor has occurred to him, but since there isn't anyone for now, that it is what it is. And then he also comments that his favorite character from the Final Fantasy series is Sephiroth. So, I you know, <laughs> it's going to be a weird day Uh when Yoshi, when Yoshi P does hand over the reins to someone else. I do hope that his successor is out there, though, because I would like Yoshi P to be able to make games, and especially these other games that he wants to make. He's done such an excellent job with Final Fantasy XIV, and it's good to hear that he'll be around for a while. What I would like to see his team you know, do is grow with the same passion that he has for the game. The bigger the team that can help you know, take some of the pressure off of him, um, you know, obviously Yoshi P did comment that more responsibility, you know, he does have more responsibility within Square Enix. And so that he has also helped oversee the team that makes sure Final Fantasy games feel like a Final Fantasy game. So with that in mind, I do hope he is with Square Enix for a very long time to come. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, especially as interesting as I did. Uh, If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and as well share it with your, your circle of friends. That'd be fantastic. Thank you in advance. I hope you do subscribe. And if you haven't already, you know, and if you already are a subscriber, thanks so much for being here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And so until next time, this is Brian for work to game and I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks.